Just the other day on the channel, I hosted a community post poll asking you guys what type of content you wanted to see more of, and by popular demand was the topic of tolerance breaks. Now, just last week, I released a video discussing the importance of why people should consider taking tolerance breaks, but in today's video, I want to provide you guys with a complete step-by-step -step guide exactly how to take a tolerance break. I want to talk about the things you should do and the things that you should avoid doing. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching Programs, which are dedicated to helping people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, substances I once struggled with. Now, if you wind up enjoying the content in today's video, be sure to check out the pinned comment or the video description for a free PDF that sums up all this stuff or to learn more about our paid one-on-one -on -one addiction recovery coaching programs or our mental health community where we get together as a big group and we talk everything mental health and addiction recovery. So the first thing that I want to emphasize is that although this channel is dedicated to helping people quit smoking weed and quit nicotine and quit adult media content, in the case of weed, a tolerance break is often the first step someone will take towards sobriety and recovery. It's very daunting to say, okay, I'm never going to smoke weed again if you've been thinking about quitting, but it's not so daunting to say, you know what, I'm going to take a week or two weeks or 30 days off and just see what this tolerance break is like. So that's why I think tolerance breaks are a very important topic to cover on our channel. All right, I want to open with this comment. This is something that I learned the hard way. Uh, when it came to weed for me, you built a tolerance for the highs, but you didn't necessarily develop a tolerance for the lows. And that was my experience. Um, no matter how much I smoked, no matter what type of weed it was, the high just didn't hit the same as it did the first few times I smoked. And what I found was that I wasn't actually chasing higher highs. I was simply chasing my next low point. And this is really just for any of you guys who might be struggling with addiction. Just something I want you to keep in the back of your mind throughout today's video. And if your, your tolerance is really high, that's a warning sign. That's often one of the first warning signs that you might be developing an addiction to, to cannabis. All right, so what you should do, and guys, this isn't set in stone. This isn't like solid science, okay? But what I would recommend for the everyday smoker, the person who's been smoking every day, is taking 30 days off once every 90 days, or better yet, just shy of every 90 days. Now, there's two reasons why I recommend this. It takes about 90 days to develop a, ha a habit and to ingrain a behavior into our habit loops. So if you take a break once every 90 days, you're disrupting that pattern of habitual behavior. And the last thing we want to do is be habitually smoking weed, becoming dependent on weed, becoming addicted to weed. So that's one reason why I recommend 90 days, breaking it up every 90 days. The other reason why I recommend 30 days off is because they say it takes about 30 days, two weeks to 30 days, for your body to start producing its own endocannabinoids again. THC is a phytocannabinoid from the cannabis plant. When you consume too much of it, you start to disrupt the function of your endocannabinoid system. This is what leads to tolerance and dependence and addiction and all types of other health complications. And it takes about 30 days weed-free for our body to start to rebalance and remake its own endocannabinoids. Or at least that's what the current literature says out there right now, okay? This advice is for the everyday smoker that I'm making this recommendation, okay? My next piece of advice as far as things to do, things that you should do, would be taking regular tolerance breaks. Take them often and take them frequently. Now, look, whether you take 30 days off every 90 days or better yet, just shy of 90 days, or you choose to go a week on, a week off, two weeks on, a, a, a month off, is up to you. Take them regularly, though. And, and I'm saying this for a reason. 
as you develop throughout life, as you grow, as your life circumstances change, right? You go from high school to college to career to maybe marriage, maybe kids. Your relationship with cannabis may also be changing. And if you're not taking regular tolerance breaks to constantly reassess your relationship with cannabis, there's a chance that you might be missing something. Just because you do something every day doesn't necessarily mean that that something is benefiting you or that that something is good for you. I like to compare it to something like this. Say you've ever worked a job and you thought to yourself, you know, this is a pretty good job, I'm fairly happy. And then you go on like a two week vacation and you come back from the job and you realize, or the vacation, and you realize, oh my God, uh, I'm so burned out from this job. I hate this job. I have to do something new. And then you go look for a new career, or you, or you really make a big life change after that break. It's no different for a lot of people when they take tolerance breaks. So I think it's super important that we're constantly reassessing our relationship with cannabis, and taking tolerance breaks is a great way to do that. Another thing that I would recommend doing is journaling your physical and mental health throughout the duration of the tolerance break. And ideally, you're going more than like two or three days or two weeks, especially if you've been smoking for years on end, because the only thing you might wind up journaling is some withdrawal symptoms. I recommend journaling, and I specifically recommend uh, the journal, The High Performance Planner. You can find it on Amazon. I put a link for it in the video description, okay? Okay. I recommend journaling about your mental and physical health so you can compare this to the times when you're actively smoking. Did your mental health improve? Did it get worse? Did your physical health improve? Did you cough a lot? Did you have horrible insomnia? Did you have stomach problems? Did you just white knuckle it until you could smoke again in 30 days? you should really try and get in touch with what it is you're feeling because this is going to help to give you a complete picture when it comes to your current relationship with cannabis, especially at a state when you're clear-minded and you're not kind of fogged by possibly dependence or in some cases maybe even addiction for people. I recommend the High Performance Planner. It's a great tool to use. And I recommend this planner because... When I was addicted to weed, I actually had a therapist tell me not only to journal when I was quitting, but to take note when I was smoking. And this was eye-opening because what I actually realized was that I was pretty miserable even when I was smoking weed, even when I was high, despite thinking that I was actually happier during these times. Like I wasn't aware of that because I was so clouded by the delusion of addiction. And it was crazy to get a moment of sobriety, look back at when I was actively high and see what I was emotionally going through and realize like, wow, wait a minute, maybe this isn't serving me in the way that I thought it was. So I'm a big fan of journaling. And look, a journal could be a voice memo to yourself every day. It could be some notes in your phone or it could be something more in depth like the High Performance Planner. Again, the link to that is in the video description. All right, so that's something you should do. Now, another thing that I would recommend doing when you're on your tolerance break is implementing in healthy habits. Uh, this could be exercise. This could be hobbies. This could be picking up a new, you know, maybe you want to pick up music or video editing, a new, a new hobby, I guess. I recommend focusing on self-care. I talk to some of the cleanest cut entrepreneurs, doctors, people with professional licenses, cleanest cut people out there that you could imagine. And that goes for any profession, okay? It's just we work with a lot of professionals on our in our services. And self-care is a big thing for everyone, right? I know when I would smoke and get high, there'd be nights where I wouldn't brush my teeth before bed. There'd be days when I get home after a long day's work, sweating all day at work, and ah, I'm too lazy to shower. I don't feel like it. Uh, I'll get to the dishes tomorrow. I'll get to cleaning that up tomorrow. Focus on self-care and being productive in self-care. Focus on developing new coping skills. 
I think it's very important during a tolerance break that we make sure that we haven't become dependent on cannabis as a coping mechanism because long-term for a lot of people, this usually fails. So a tolerance break is a great time to work on deep breathing techniques. Maybe you work with a professional. Maybe you work with a therapist. Maybe you work with a coach like Dr. Frank. That's a plug for myself. Okay, but focus on healthy coping habits to make sure that cannabis isn't becoming your primary go-to coping habit. And then I would also recommend working on affirmations. These are just things that could involve goals that you expect to see yourself to accomplish and things that you know you're capable of doing. And I think affirmations can be really important too because if you have these affirmations and you, you know, maybe you journal them and you're continuing to smoke and you're not hitting these targets, hitting these affirmations, hitting these goals, this might be that wake up call to reassess your relationship with cannabis. And then, you know, I, if you've ever heard of the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. I wouldn't call you guys stupid. I would never do that. I don't even like that. But I, I thought of keep it simple, stoners. And, okay, I'm saying that as, you know, an ex-weed smoker myself, okay, not in a derogatory way. But I say that because this, when you're taking a tolerance break, your body might be going through withdrawal and detox. This is not the time to take on the world. You want to you want to choose simple things, simple healthy habits and hobbies, simple self-care practices, basic coping skills, and then some really straightforward affirmations to focus on because the last thing you want to do is try and take on the world in this 30-day break or two-week break and then wind up completely overwhelming yourself and not even completing the tolerance break, right? Keep it simple, okay? Now, what shouldn't you do when you're on a tolerance break? I would recommend not absolutely under no circumstances should you go consume any other psychedelic form of cannabis, any cannabis that has psychoactive properties, Delta 8, Delta 10, Delta 9, which is your standard THC, obviously, THCO or THC acetate. Stay away from it, guys, because the point is you're trying to refresh and give your endocannabinoid system a break and a potential at recovering and healing and rebalancing, and these substances are going to screw that up. Now, what about CBD? People ask me all the time. I 100% don't recommend vaping it. I absolutely do not recommend smoking it in the form of dry herb. Now, If you find a quality CBD tincture or gummy, the gummies are a go-to that we recommend for people, this could be a reasonable option for you, especially if you really are struggling with anxiety and insomnia and other negative THC withdrawal symptoms during your tolerance break. It's not something you have to do. It's not something you necessarily should do, but it's something that I'm personally not opposed to when it comes to how we advise on our recovery coaching programs, okay? CBD does not bind to the CB1 receptors that THC binds to, CBD has been shown to be beneficial in rebalancing THC overdoses or toxicities. I put that in quotations, obviously. CBD has also been shown to help rebalance the endocannabinoid system. Uh, I put a link in the video description to the CBD gummies that we recommend to people. If you're doing a 30-day tolerance break, one CBD gummy a day, either in the morning or before bed, is usually what we recommend. It's very important, though, when you're purchasing a CBD product that it has third-party testing, organically grown, domestically grown right here in the USA. You want to look for those QR codes on it. And really, I would advise you to vet the company that you are purchasing from, the company that we work with, that I've worked with for years. I personally know the owners of the company. Like, they're wonderful people. So there you guys go. Okay. Now, what else would I avoid doing? I would not consume other drugs during this time. So many, so often, people will take a tolerance break and they'll wind up getting like insomnia. Insomnia is the biggest thing. And they'll say, oh my God, I can't sleep. And then what they'll do is they'll start drinking before bed or they'll start taking like sleeping aids or popping pills or they'll, they'll over consume adult media content or totally start binging social media content instead of going out there and doing some of those other healthier things that we talked about earlier. 
And this can put you in a really negative place. Not only do you risk now polysubstance use, just introducing another substance into the already cannabis consumption, but you're also risking not giving your body a chance to rebalance. It's pretty largely accepted at this point that alcohol and other substances do have some type of impact on the endocannabinoid system. So we want to do everything we can to maximize this tolerance break for our ECS or our endocannabinoid system. This is the last thing you want to do. And if you find yourself doing this, you really have to start to question whether or not you're struggling with a cannabis substance use disorder or a cannabis addiction. Very, very common behavior. I know for me, on my tolerance breaks, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm not going to smoke weed, but I am going to like drink two beers before bed every night now. Makes no sense. It's, it's not a good option. Now, I want to give a warning when it comes to cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. If this is something you're struggling with, uh, one, we've made tons of videos on our channel about this, but you have to consider a lifelong tolerance break. People often ask me, oh, if I have CHS and I just like quit smoking for you know a, a month or a year, am I going to be okay? In most cases, no. People who suffer from cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, they, they should not smoke again, period. Uh, the good news is there's a cure, and the cure to CHS is sobriety and, in many cases, addiction recovery. S excuse me. So if you have CHS, I would, I would not recommend consuming any forms of cannabis, and that goes for CBD, unfortunately, as well, too. Uh, people with CHS, CBD is not even well tolerated. And that's kind of my warning warning sign for that. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video and you didn't see my first video on why you should consider taking tolerance breaks where we talk about the importance of them, go check that out. If you need help with addiction or taking a tolerance break, check out the pinned comment to learn more about our one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can also learn more about our group mental health community. It's $4.97 a month. You get access to myself and my buddy Macaulay Sexton, another addiction recovery coach, where we go live in that group and work with people in a group setting to help them out. Or just download our free content, the Tolerance uh, Break Survival Guide, the 11 Foundational Pillars to Recovery, the 7-Step Guide to Quit Smoking Weed Today, all completely free, and you can find that in the link in the pinned comment or the video description. All right, guys, I'll see you in one or multiple of those various spots. Until next time.